Hello, welcome back. We are here with an Ender 5 Max. I want to show you it. Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I have a story. I'm not going to talk through this whole thing. I'm just going to explain why there's no sound on the video. The reason is I was, for the first time, able to record on this floor of the building, which is the R&D department. And normally they don't let me take my camera there because there's lots of stuff around that uh, we just can't show yet. And so we're talking the whole time, as you can see me pointing at it and stuff like that. But they also are talking in Chinese quite a lot. And I, I don't know exactly what they're saying. I'm, I'm worried somebody that understands Chinese is going to uh, listen in. And maybe they said things that I'm going to get in trouble for. So it was just easier for me to not record the audio and not get in trouble. So I wanted to show you the new Ender 5 Max. There's two of them sitting here. Um, I'm trying to get a hold of one myself so I can take apart the hot end and stuff. Basically, I was able to ask all the questions I wanted to ask. Um, I asked about the hot end mostly in the nozzle. It is a unicorn nozzle, but it's not the same unicorn nozzle as the K1, and it's not the same unicorn nozzle as the K2+. Plus. I, I was super disappointed to hear that, but uh, I'm going to try to get one so I can take it apart and find out what the difference is. He said the hot end is very much like the K1 series. So that's good news for me because I do know how to take that all apart. But I'm just not sure what, what they mean by that. You can see it's got a linear rail on the top. It's doing this amazing calibration print that I find very, very good. I, I wish I would have got video of the quality of the print because there's a few more behind us that I was looking at too. But here now I moved the camera because it's doing that overhang. And I was like, wow, it does such a good job of that stringing across there. So, yeah, I'm I'm happy with it. I would like to see a, a large print, obviously. I've got lots of comments in the last video about the things that you guys want to see. Uh, I am trying to get a hold of one. And they are on sale here in China now. I saw them on our Chinese website. And I can buy one. It's 5,299 RMB, which translates to about 727 US dollars. Canadian dollars, 1,040. So I don't know if that's going to be the price range when it goes overseas, but that's the price we can get them for here now. I'll repeat what I said in the last video for those of you who forgot. The build plate size on this 400 by 400 by 400. That's the build area. Not the build plate size, sorry, that's the build area. The build plate obviously is, I think it's 415 by 415, but the build area, 400 by 400 by 400. It's huge. And so it's got two lead screws, right? And then four rods. So, I mean, obviously the size of those prints could be quite heavy. So it's got some, oh, it's got four lead screws here, you can see. Two on each side. Yeah, it's unreal. And so simple, just this frame. This is how they will sell without panels. So when you buy it, 
it looks exactly like that. There's no panels on the outside at all. There are panels that you can add. Those will be optional. And a top also that you can add, which will be optional. So if you want to enclose it, you could. The green light means it's printing. We can't quite see the light on the other one, but the other one's light would be orange right now because it's ready to print. And then if you have a fault or an error, the light is red. So it's got three different modes on the light. All of the electronics are underneath. You can see the two motors down on the bottom. But then all of the electronics are in that box in the bottom. There's no electronics on the back at all. The filament runout sensor is there on the side, just above the filament. Somebody mentioned earlier that they would, would have hoped there would be a cable chain on it. I thought, I mean, it's not a bad idea, but this one seems to be running fine like this. And if you're printing in PLA, you don't need panels. It's, this is all you need right here. If you've got a print farm and you're printing primarily in PLA, what do you need panels for? Maybe keep it cleaner, but it's huge. It's a really big machine and for a great price, I thought. Yeah, I'm not going to talk anymore. So thanks a lot for watching the video. Uh, we're going to let it keep running here and showing you that. I will just say thank you very much for subscribing. It's been a great year. I am trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of December. We're really close. So I really appreciate all of you subscribing. If you haven't subscribed and you want to see more videos of printers before they're available, that is what I'm trying to focus on now. I'm trying to show you guys printers for the first time. So thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you in the next one.